Uh, my name is John Danko. I'm a third generation in a family-owned business. My grandfather started this company in 1920. We used to be on the corner of Light and Lee Street, where the Harbor Court Hotel is. Um, but now we are up on Wabash Avenue in Park Heights in Pimlico area, Baltimore City, Northwest Baltimore City. The facility that we have is about 75,000 square feet, and we have about 75 employees right now. You can imagine uh, it's a big facility for a few, a number of employees, as well as my grandfather built by hand the three buildings that we're in right now in 1940, 1950, and 1960. So there's a lot of old technology in our facilities that quite frankly we did not know uh, could be updated even more than what we've done. So the foundry business is uh, melting metal and pouring the molten metal into molds made out of sand. And we're really one of the last two or three foundries left in Maryland. So it's a quite uh, niche business right now. In fact, our green team just arrived five minutes ago just in time because they were pouring metal for one of our valuable customers north of Crumman right next to us. <laughs> so we are multitasking today <laughs> in, uh, in this room. So what we thought, we obviously with metal casting, our only raw material that we have is aluminum ingot. Um, that's a direct material. We actually get our metal from the Ruckert terminal down t in, uh, in our harbor. So the rest of our majority of our costs are really energy and other indirect expenses. So it's a huge amount of our, um, of our bottom line that goes into making our parts, particularly with energy. So with this uh, forum and with this energy audit, we were able to realize a lot of things that we just did not, we didn't think about. We thought we were doing the right thing. We even worked, f we even worked four days a week, four tens, to save energy, because we don't have to melt metal on Friday. That saves 20% of our, our bottom line right there. But we actually have a lot of initiatives that uh, were brought to us, including HVAC upgrade, insulation for the building and windows, and uh, uh, another interesting concept would be to cut to regenerate or co-generate using the waste heat that goes up our smokestacks. So we have seven smokestacks and all this heat just goes up the stack. And if we could get that back in form of energy, uh, we're looking into that right now, how we can get some savings. But as Mike said, uh, four years ago, we adopted 3D printing uh, as a part of our business. So you imagine, why would you do this? Well, we have uh, old apprenticeships going back to the 1940s in tool and die making called pattern making. And this profession, this trade is actually obsolete. It's 10,000 hours in five years to become a pattern maker. And so, like most American trades, this is gone today with young people. And no young people today don't want to get, really don't want to get involved in this kind of manufacturing. So with 3D printing, we're able to make tools and dies untouched by human hands all off a 3D printer, which by the way, uh, only has a square f footprint of maybe eight by eight feet for each printer, and that has reduced our carbon footprint in our company. A 10,000 square foot warehouse wood shop has now been replaced by two 3D printers. So this is really, really interesting technology for RMI, for Maryland, and for our, co our country as a whole, how we're gonna compete with other, other nations. So again, uh, the RMI um, initiative here has been great for us. We've learned a lot. We have a lot to think about. We're also working with another partner, Ingleson Rand, who's here. And uh, so we have a lot of compressed air issues and leaks to as well. So thank you very much. Yeah. John, thank you. And I just want to also, I want to mention John and I both serve on the advisory board for 3D Maryland, which again is an initiative out of Howard County, is a statewide initiative that RMI is in partnership with to help bring this technology to manufacturers across the state. So, uh, but I got to tell you, if you really want to see how this stuff works, I noticed he didn't give out his phone number. He's a busy guy. I would encourage you to go over there. It's definitely worth taking a look at it because it really is 3D printing, working in manufacturing that's creating a positive. So thank you, John. Thank you very much.